Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life. And I think you know by now, one of my little pet projects right now is languages. You know I'm learning a bit of Latin, um, working on expanding that more, right? And practicing how to pronounce the words correct for the mass and prayers. And as well as I'm learning some Spanish. And then I added in Korean. Why am I completely crazy? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, but in our secular Franciscan, in America, the secular Franciscans USA, we have four official languages and they are, oh, sorry. I'm probably even doing this wrong right now. They are English, American Sign Language, Spanish, and Korean. I probably just did that wrong. Completely forgive me. Um, a while ago, I had taken some ASL and I don't run into that group very often and so I don't get a chance to practice it or use it and I probably need to find people more and that's the same thing with happened with the Spanish I really don't have anyone to practice Spanish with and so that's kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit too but do I still do them both every week I do um, yeah I'm always practicing them but it's still it's not the same as talking to a native speaker and that's something that's come up in Korean as well. So we do actually have some folks from Korea in our fraternity, as well as in our region, as well as where the friary we meet is located. So there's just more Koreans around and a lot of Korean restaurants. So even if I wanna go out to eat with my family, I can't eat pork or spicy. And I, so there's some things I need to learn to say, but the, <laughs> Korean's not really like that. You can probably learn that more quickly in other languages, but Korean is an Asian language and has politeness levels. So what's up with that? Okay, so for most of these languages, I was trying to use one app. I was trying to save time because I was using Duolingo for Spanish. It had been recommended to me. And so when they came out with Latin and they came out with Korean, I thought, great, I'm gonna use that for all three of those languages not exactly working out right. The Spanish is a little awkward where it seems to be centered more on people in Europe. Um, I'm not sure why, but we're always go talking about going to London and stuff, and I don't know, but it actually has some more everyday conversation, like I'm getting up late, see you tomorrow, that kind of stuff. The Latin is like my sisters and your sons are sleeping in the city who would ever say that like the sentences are awful and it sounds like they got a bunch of five-year-olds to randomly say words into an old cassette recorder so super awkward and it's not like that's ecclesiastical latin right that's probably classical latin so the pronunciation's a little whack there too and we know i have do have some ecclesiastical latin books and so i'm using those and of course practicing my prayers and using videos like dr taylor marshall's and some others so latin's taking care of that way spanish is pretty okay on the duolingo app now when i started korean on the duolingo app it made literally no sense i was trying to match symbols with sounds and the symbols didn't make any sense and so i did get do you remember friends i went out and got those uh i'm trying to hold them correctly let's back it down I went out and got the flashcards, so it's got the letter on one side, and on the back, it has a romanization, tells you how to draw it, which ways to do the strokes, as well as um, its name, and it shows you, it's used in some words, and tells you that this one is actually a compound vowel. Honestly, most of this did not make sense to me, except maybe the stroke corner drawing. <laughs> And these romanizations matched up with Duolingo. And I quickly learned that I was learning something wrong. I had a feeling that the romanization, the use of the English or you know Roman letters was not making sense at all. Why is this you? And some of them sound exactly the same, even though the romanization was different. And it seemed yeah, I, like I had a suspicion of his learning bad habits. And so I went and saw some different videos on the internet. I think I did 
Korean 101 was a decent one. But then I stepped into these videos by Billy Go. Um, and for, sorry, Go Billy. That one of the first ones though that I watched, he really warned you about saying when you're speaking Korean that you want to speak to someone mainly of the same gender because the women do say things a little bit differently than males do. Um, and so that kind of freaked me out and I'm like, well, I don't want to watch videos by a guy and I hadn't found videos by a girl yet that I liked and so I tried a couple. And you can hear the slight difference that he's talking about, but the topics they were talking about, I wasn't quite ready for and his videos actually seemed better. And when he explained like, hey, it's okay, especially if you're learning the alphabet, go ahead and learn from me. Um, in the meantime though, I'm like, uh, I need something for vacation. I thought I could get a little book because I realized Duolingo and the flashcards, there was something missing. And so I got this because you know, I love storytelling, right? I was like, oh, Korean stories and I'd be learning culture. So it seemed like a natural fit for me. And I went and got them. Oh, and there's a CD in the back. So I got my husband to make me an MP3 of that. So I'd have the sounds. Here's a hint. They say it rather fast, um, but it does have a very short story. And then it has the script in English. It gives you vocabulary words. And then there's some comprehension questions. So this is pretty nice. Um, it's just a little bit difficult for where I am, where I'm still trying to learn Hangul which is the Korean alphabet. It looks misleading at first. It kind of looks like Chinese letters. So at first when I was using Duolingo, it was really interesting because I was engaging. I knew the same part of my brain as I do when I do ASL, which is very visual. Um, and it's a different one than uses for like English and Spanish. But as I've gone on, that has switched. And I know that because when I was originally doing the, the hangle, I was trying to translate things in my head. I could see the ASL that might correspond to it. And that's actually gone away. And now I'm seeing in my head like English or Latin. So I know I'm engaging a different part of my brain. My brain has recognized now, oh, those aren't pictures. Those aren't visual representations. Those are letters. And for some reason, that's a different part of your brain. Very interesting science there, friends. But I do love that this has the vocabulary and all, but I'm still not quite ready. And I, I admit, I was looking at endings of words. I was really investigating them because I felt like there was something going on there, but this book wasn't telling me why the endings of words mattered, but I could start to see that the endings were significant. And so I was curious, but I'd already spent money on Duolingo and flashcards and this book. And I couldn't really ask my husband to get me another book. Ha! Then this happened. So, you know, I've been reviewing the books from Tan, Pan, Tan Books, and a bunch of their books are on Kindle. And I said, hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look and see if Go Billy's system of books is available on Kindle. Maybe there's a page or two that I can look at to see what it's like. Oh my goodness, friends, the sample size he sends you is amazing. It's why I'm filming on my phone today instead of my iPad so that I can show you. Um, let's see if I can even make it big. This is, it. can you see it okay? It's a little odd with the light. Um, Korean made simple right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and try and open it. And a lot of these lessons do correspond to the videos I've been watching, but there's more. Um, this is a very advanced book. Look, I can, yeah, that table of contents is linked. And when I turned on Kindle today, it actually says it has a new features activated, a notebook and making flashcards from here. So I can make flashcards from the vocabulary in the book. I'm not joking, not joking. Um, so let's go back and look at something. Now here's the difference. He's not going to tell you um, the romanization necessarily, he's going to give you several different things to let you know how it sounds. So he's like, uh, let me go back one more page. This is the vowel. He's like type of vowel, type vowel, pronunciation. It's a combination of a Y sound with, and he doesn't tell you the English equivalent. He gives you the Korean one. So it's like a Y with the S sound. So it sounds like, yeah, number of strokes, four, stroke order, and there's a picture as well as a description. 
and the description's pretty good. First, draw, and he tells you what letter to draw. Then you're drawing the next letter he tells parallel to the right of it. You can also think of this vowel as being a combination. Ah, so it's being E combined with E. And when you say E and E together fast enough, you get yet. I was like, whoa, like that makes so much more sense. It's why these compound vowels weren't making any sense to me. Why do they suddenly have a Y or a W in front of them? What on earth is going on? But Billy goes and he explains that to you, how it happens. Basically, people talk faster than they write. And so it's a compound vowel. They're together. Ah, that makes sense. It's like there's a little hyphen in them, right? Or a um, little apostrophe, right? It's a compound word. And then you're like, oh, that's how we use that word in English, compound words, two things together. So this is a compound letter. Oh, it makes sense. It's just the way he explains it. He is such a good teacher. And you could easily be reading the chapter and watch the video on that segment as well. And I think there's audio for all these available for free on the internet. And it's just interesting. And then he's going to have some practice for you. And he does those in the video where he tells you to pause on the screen and then you try and say them yourself. And then he'll come on and give you the answers. Now there's going to be interesting things when he says things aren't always spelled the way they're pronounced and he tells you in korean how they're said and how or how they're written and how they're pronounced here's his version of syllable blocks you can tell this is a pretty advanced lesson but he shows you things not just like there's audio there's visual and it's it's just so well organized you know i'm such a nerd i love like footnotes and all the tables charts he gives you all that um some people had a complaint I'm trying to find a section where it's, ah, I'm going to tell you that. Now it's like, did you enjoy this sample? Don't kick me out of the sample. Oh, I went too far, that's why. So let me go back a bit. Ah, here we go. Here is a page that has questions and answers. All you have to do, somebody said, is have a piece of paper and cover up the, uh, cover up the answers. It's not rocket science. You probably did that in elementary school where you had to cover up the answers in your workbook and then you revealed them. You can do that, friends. Um, and just, I love that I accidentally, you know, just because I was being nosy, got the Kindle book instead of the print book. I thought I would love the print book, but if this Kindle version is now gonna make me flashcards with vocabulary, yeah. Okay, we all see my inner nerd doing a happy dance here. It's a very awkward happy dance, but I'm totally doing it. Um, this was just the sample, and it's a generous sample, so you can get in and see what it is. I'm interested to see later um, when I get the book if I can actually draw. So the fun thing about this is I do have the little Apple pen, and I don't know if I can do it, but at least I can go over and trace things on here when it says to draw the letter, like I can go on and trace it with this. And I know that this particular pen is not gonna ruin my Kindle. That's an important fact if you're trying that. You'd want something like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. So I'm pretty excited. I've been watching a lot of uh, his videos, Go Billy Korean videos. And so I'm pretty excited. I'm not the best at using my Kindle, you can tell. I'm trying to like get back to the beginning. Ah, about this book flashcards. I'm just so excited. And I can sync it. So if I use it on my phone on the Kindle app, and then I want to use it on the big Kindle, no problem. They sync now. Oh my goodness, friends. I am, I'm really excited. This does have a huge, it's like a four and a half stars out of five on Kindle. It's pretty exciting. Typical time to read. Yeah, that's not going to work. But it is book one of three. And that's pretty exciting. So there's, I think there's three textbooks as well as a workbook that you can get in the series. And so, yeah, I'm legit excited. I'm probably gonna work my way a little bit through the sample and more of the videos. And then hopefully that gets me up close to a holiday where I can get somebody to buy me all the books for Christmas. Because I'm not gonna need a whole bunch of new clothes cause capsule wardrobe, I need something to buy. And I'm still looking for a Korean language partner, somebody maybe who wants to work on their English and I want to work on my Korean and we could get together and work. If not, but hey, Billy's already told me in videos some of the great apps 
for finding legit friends and not just creepy people um, that are willing to do that as well as honestly because there is a huge Korean community near my community um, there's already programs that exist so hopefully I can find a language partner soon and yeah start learning to speak Korean which the whole point of that is speaking to Koreans <laughs> And not because they're Korean, just because they're neighbors and I can't talk to them. All of my Spanish speaking neighbors, they speak English just fine. All of my ASL friends, I can write notes to. Um, I, can, I seem to be able to communicate. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. But my Korean friends, it's not so good friends. <laughs> Even writing doesn't help. I have not found a way to communicate yet. So I'm looking forward. Oh, oh, remember when I said about the politeness levels earlier? I'm sorry, talking a lot and talking fast because I want to get this in. Um, I have found, and I can't say it's true or not because I'm not Korean, but somebody has said, well, several places on the internet have said that what you're learning in Duolingo and some of the other apps is casual Korean. What you would say to your best friends and please don't say those things in public maybe okay for learning hangul but maybe not for learning phrases but go billy korean is all super duper polite and yeah some people are like hey <laughs> um but i would always want to be more polite than risk being rude people don't normally get mad at you for being too polite they may giggle at you but they're not going to get mad at you as well as i work on newsletters and so i would have to use polite Korean in that and so that's probably the better way for me to go and if I learn casual that's going to be from my language partner and that would be for us in conversation I'm sure they know how to speak politely <laughs> anyway friends what are you doing to build a more fraternal world you've probably got lots of great tips and ideas please put it down in the comments below and if you're a Korean language speaker or know a great resource the thing I haven't found yet friends is a great resource for prayers. I did find one for the rosary um, because, well, I'll just link that below, but they're actual videos in Korean and they have open captioning on them that has the Korean. And so I got out my little Korean dictionary, which I have a decent one because go Billy Korean told me what to do. Anyway, I can look up the words and the endings. And so I'm kind of using that to study the way I often do Latin, where I write out a Bible passage and then I try and translate it, which is part of why I bought this book, because that method works for me. And so that's what I'm doing with my prayers. So I have one for the rosary that I'm kind of trying to stumble through. But if you know of a great resource for Catholic prayers in Korean, please let me know. In the meantime, yeah, God bless you, friends. And get ready. I'm going to throw our prayer to the crucifix prayer before the crucifix on here. I'm going to jump in our little video there. God bless you, friends. Bye. Horatio ante crucifixum. In nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. Sume gloriose Deus. Illumina tenebras cordis mehi et da mihi fidem rectum. Spam certum et caritatem perfectum. Sensum et cognitionem domine ut facium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum. Amen. In omni patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen.